All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, uh, I am graced with the presence of Ivan Delaflor. And Ivan, so great to see you. It is so nice to see you. So, so many years we met through, you know, through the amazing Kevin Nations, yeah. whom I'm always grateful for because, you know, once I always like to pay tribute where things begin, you know, the foundations of everything are so powerful. So that's thanks to that I'm here. And so it's such an honor to be with you that you're such a connector of people and uh, of missions and of purposes. So it's such an honor to be here. Yeah, and I, I totally feel the same way, Ivan, and, and it's been way too long since you and I have I know. seen each other or had a conversation. Can or... we can we say, Kevin, that I have sometimes sent texts to Kevin Nations, and I'm like messaging you, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I got the wrong Kevin. <laughs> well, that's all right, too. That's all right, too. Oh, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, a quick story about Kevin, because uh, I... I can't remember what year it was that I found out about Kevin, probably around 2013 or so when I found out about Kevin and, uh, and ended up reaching out to him and having a conversation with him because I wanted to go to one of his big money, you know, from small events uh, trainings. And uh, when we had that conversation, for whatever reason, he felt that I was not a right fit to attend. And I he, love Kevin. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, Kevin, he's like, I got nothing against you, man. He's like, you're a great guy. I just don't think this is a right fit for you. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm going to tell you, Ivan, in that moment, I was like, what is, what are you talking about? That's what I'm <laughs> thinking to myself. And, <laughs> and so the fall, it was, I don't know how many months later, uh, but it, it was at a traffic and conversion summit in San Diego. And he was there. And, and I ran into him and I, and I just, I just, I just walked up to him. I was like, Kev, uh, I saw him standing out in the lobby. I just walked up and I introduced myself. And I said, you know what? I said, you and I had a conversation a while back and uh, you felt that I wasn't a right fit for the stuff that you do. And, and I'm just going to be completely blunt. I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. And uh, if you're open to it, I would really like to have a conversation with you again and and just because I, I think I'm a perfect fit and I want to come to one of these. And, and so that night he, he agreed. He's like, Kevin, he's like, I'm going out to dinner with some friends this evening. But when I get back, he's like, we can sit down and we can have a conversation. And and when we had that conversation, uh, he was like, Kevin, he's like, you know what? You're right. I, 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 I misjudged you. I misjudged you and you are totally a right fit. And so, you know, I, and, and I look at what's happened in my own life since that time spent, because not only did I go to his event, I spent two years in the family mastermind group as well. And that's why I got to meet you a little bit and get to know you. And uh, a whole lot of pretty amazing things have happened and unfolded since then. And oh, so yes. like you, Ivan, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative of Kevin and, and heck I need to interview him on this podcast and and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna inter, I'm, I'm gonna reach out to him and let him know I, we need to make that happen too so send can. him this one send him this one telling him you know we were talking in front of your instead of behind your back that's <laughs> right that's <laughs> right yeah, we love Kevin he's such a great human so. being well, I'll tell you what, so now we've kind of got a little context set on how you and yeah. I met and, and, uh, and you know, uh, and so what I'd like to do is just kind of start off, uh, Ivan, by turning it over to you and let you share a little bit about what you do, who you serve, what motivates you to do what you do, and just give everybody an idea of, like, who is Ivan Delafleur? Well, that's the, that's the, like your mastermind, that's the million dollar question, you know, if, if, when, when I find out who, who she is fully, you know, I'll probably be in Nirvana or totally disappear as the light. But, you know, my name, as you share it, is Yvonne de la Flor. I'm the founder of a company called de la Flor Teachings International, which is a coaching and consulting systemic, it's a systemic and spiritual coaching and consulting company. It's like one of a kind because usually people do coaching and consulting, but they don't add the aspect of systemics or something called futuring or something called rebirthing. So all the somatic practices that help people, people systems, teams, uh, 
people's in position of leadership heal trauma in order to create better better realities from that instead of avoiding it you know, just to use it as fuel to build better realities better futures innovate and so that's what uh, my company does right i'm also uh, the founder of a nonprofit organization called mastery life and we've been years kevin years this is in mexico base we were the first people in mexico to bring all the hay house authors long before like Kevin, I'm feeling really young, very <laughs> older. But it was 20 years ago, you know, when Don Miguel Ruiz, you know, from the Four Agreements was just starting. We brought, we brought all of those incredible teachers to uh, to Mexico. That's how I began to build very good uh, a network of friends of genuine of genuine uh, people that are really genuinely serving humanity, which for me is super important, right? That the, the core values align. So we have that nonprofit organization and it's really nonprofit. When I tell you nonprofit is Mexican based and we have had so much issues, but we have been able to support um, all Latin America and some of the countries in Spain and you know, Spanish speaking people, unbelievable. It went viral that all the things that we have done with that. Wow. So I'm also, you know, I'm also a producer of a TV network called the Network for Human Empowerment which also went viral and is again a free network television that serves through spiritual leadership, you know, uh, mindset wisdom to Latin America freely. So we have TV shows. We started with two TV shows. We are now in 12 TV shows. Wow. So, and it went viral and it was organically the growth. Again, it's nonprofit, but we, we do all of that work, especially for Latin America. Right. And now who I am, you know, that's a that's a great question. I am. Yeah, I, I, do you want to go through the spiritual path or the I translate it into I am, you know, uh, someone that is always focused on discovering who I am and who can I become better than my version of yesterday. Right. Yeah. I have no enemies except, you know, my limitations that I have in my mind. At the age of 17, I had a near death experience in a car my new car, Kevin, that my dad had saved all his money to buy me my new car. You know, we, my friend and I, we were 17. We escaped to a little party that we were going, to, you know, we, our parents said, you cannot go out. And it was like, we heard, go, go, right? <laughs> we went to a little party. I'm not proud of that, you know, and we, you used my, the new car that my dad had given me and I let my friend drive. And on the way back of the party, you know, we were cool, et cetera. We went into a street in Mexico. It's not like the United States, Kevin. I love the United States because, you know, they close the street. They let you know like 10 miles before, close street and or 10 days before, right? In, on, on April 27 of 2027, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Mexico is like street closed now. <laughs> you know? And they close the street with a concrete wall. Oh, they wow. built a concrete wall and a lot of, cars crashed and it was, you know, it was, uh, um, we were downhill, we were driving fast and uh, we crashed through that wall, uh, to that wall. And um, the, the car that made an impact to the right side where there was, I gotta say this because that's a lot of my spiritual path. There was a Holy Mother statue that is very revered in Mexico. Mexicans, you know, there are, most Mexico is a Catholic based, uh, Christian and Catholic based uh, culture. And they do believe in saints and they believe in the Holy Mother, Virgin of Guadalupe. And we crashed with that statue that was there. And, uh, and thanks to that, we save our lives because a lot of people died crashing, uh, you know, just directly. But uh, when we did that and we crashed on the Holy Mother thing, literally we crashed on the Holy Mother, it was like someone pulled me and my right arm, and you can see it on video only, not on the audio, but, you know, it was totally removed. It was caught by the door. Yeah, you know, if you can see the doctors, Kevin, did an incredible fit, right? Actually, they, it was the first worldwide, I had to be the first, right? But the first worldwide reconstruction of an arm, nerve by nerve, muscle by muscle, all the doctors wow. won an award and everything because of this, they put it back. Wow. Being totally detached, right? They put it back and you know, that, that car incident, not accident. This is very important. This is part of who I am. That incident really detonated having what Napoleon Hill calls the other self. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know that that was the other cell back then. Later on, you know, as I practice my spiritual, you know, uh, I do my spiritual cultivation. You know, I, 
I look for becoming better myself. All of that, I found out that that was my other self. And we can talk about that a little bit, but, um, you know, I, we, we literally survived from that impact. I was one month in the hospital. I was in intensive care. I was seeing all sorts of dreams, worlds, et cetera. And, and uh, that was challenging. I was told that I was never going to be able to walk. Actually, I have a leg that has 33 titanium, uh, you know, screws and a plate and that I was not going to keep an arm. I'm, I'm, I'm both walking and with an arm, you know, creating trouble. <laughs> creating trouble. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing story. And, and, and you know, the, the, the story that you've created about, as you said, not this accident, but this incident. Yes. Is, you know, and, and I know we have a mutual friend in Jesse Elder as well. And oh, I love Jesse. I, I just talked to him and we got to bring him to our podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I did uh, a, a three year stretch where I was consulting with Jesse and getting his advice and insight from my business. And that was one of the things that he and I spoke in depth about is, you know, the stories we tell ourselves about our past. And, yeah, and I have definitely had a past and like you, you know, the, the story that I used to tell myself was completely different than the story now. And, and by realizing the story for what it really is, you know, it wasn't an accident. It was not a bad thing. It was a really good thing. It was a really empowering thing. And, and the fact that I went through all that years ago has given me so much, uh, you know, empathy for, for the people that I get to work with and serve now. And, and, and do it in a way that I would have not even be possible for me to do had I not had those experiences. And so it's really powerful, Ivan. It's really powerful. <laughs> yeah, because you know that whatever those experiences, like I have that near that experience and I have so many other experiences, right? Like have divorce. I have so many that are not as impactful as this one that I have an evidence because I carry the scars, right? And yeah. I'm proud of carrying the scars because I have evidence. I'm not making up a story of like, and I died. And, you know, I, one thing I do want to say, every time I speak about near that experience, you know, people are like, what do you see? I saw nothing. <laughs> I want to tell you, it was not like a stellar apparition. I did see such a brilliant light in my car. But what I saw was myself and I had incredible faith. I, there was no doubt, there was no hesitation. And part of who I am is faith, right? For me, all everything in my life is fueled by faith, you know, faith in action. Like Nietzsche says, faith without action is dead. And ob obviously I was not dead. Yeah. I was alive. So I became faith. I became the faith. And that's part of my mission since you asked me. Girl. So I really help people restore the power of self-faith and be able to be the calm but on command and i'm actually writing a book about that right now i just finished that chapter it's called calm on command because you know we are going to life is filled with storms it is an illusion to think that life is easy i love that and it can become easy right it can become chill like our beautiful kevin nations right it can become but there's going to be storms you know without the storms we will never appreciate the calm so what part of my my job is to be able to to facilitate to people a way that they can access that and in the, instead of they fearing suffering fearing the storms fearing the dark fearing the moments of the near death experiences that we all going to have not on an accident, not on a car crash, but in every day when you close a business, when you uh, start a new relationship, you have to die always to the old to mm -hmm. become the better version of you. And so um, it, it's, it's such a powerful thing just to be aware that uh, incidents, and I love how you said it, you know, I never thought about that, Kevin, of like how you, how I tell the story of that moment and obviously Jesse Elder I remember I, you know I he was my coach too and uh, maybe one day we'll all sit together and he'll tell you you know I, my coaching session with him he was literally manifesting pianos I'm just gonna leave it like there you know but um but yeah so it, it's 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 super important not only what we tell ourselves but what we do with their story that we have Right. What are we going to do? Because I feel that nothing is wasted. It can be leveraged. It can give, be, give us resilience. It can give us the master of self-reliance and it can make us really powerful magnetic beings. But we got to choose to go through that path. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate you sharing. All. And, you know, I, I've, I knew going into this, this was going to be completely different than any other interview that I've done on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I mean, I just love the way that you always show up, you know? <laughs> and so, thank you. Okay. So now that we've kind of got a little bit of context set here, yes. let's shift gears. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of the listeners. So have you ever been introduced to a person that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person. And I'm just really excited for the opportunity to have you share your story, your experience around this and honor somebody who's had such a profound impact on your life and on your business. I, you know, I feel I, I, this is a moment that I feel like if I will win the Oscar, I, I will forget the names of, of the important people, you know, the, to choose one is kind of a, it's hard because my life has been surrounded by, by people whom, whose wisdom I have chosen to change my life with. But, um, you know, it, it's hard because there's so many people, but I will, I will, you know, I, I will go uh, with my first former husband. You know, uh, he's an incredible entrepreneur, the father of my children. And uh, he was an incredible meditator, incredible business person. You know, he was the president of Pepsi, you know, and, and the owners of so many things, many businesses, international. He was incredibly powerful businessman. He still is, right? And But he was also a very deep meditator, always trying to defy the odds in his mind, always trying to, to not, all, not reach enlightenment, but to understand the mechanics of human consciousness. And when I, I met him, you know, I had been meditating since I was 12. I was super devoted to God. Actually, in 2018, I became a Christian by choice because I had a dream that I had to. So it's a whole, you know, being spiritual and, and being having my friends Buddhist and then becoming a Christian. It has been a whole, you know, a whole another storm of my life that I love. But he was such an incredible uh, disciplined man in business and everything. And he introduced me to the power of the present moment. Actually, he gave me a gift called the present, called the present. And it really changed my life. I was already meditating. You know, I had already the background to, to be able to grasp that. But it took me to a whole journey, you know, of meditation, of mind, brainwave entrainment. He facilitated for me to, to meet the most incredible people and teachers worldwide from uh, bioscientists to quantum physicists, meditation masters, you know, I had the privilege to study with every single one of them live because he facilitated that. So I think, you know, I could honor my mother, my father, everyone, but that was a key point because it really showed me who I was and who I was not. And I think that that's the most important thing, you know, for you to discover who you are not in order to choose who you are and begin to delete all the stuff that you are not, not you are not. But if you allow me, you know, I know that you just keep it to one person. I'm gonna jump into the future. Okay. And that's that was the, like my initiation. Now is I'm gonna speak about my mentor right now, which it has been such a change in my mind and does in my life, and his name is Tim Grover. He was the mentor of Brian, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I forgot, uh, you, you know, the basketball players, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. He's the author of two books called Relentless and Winning, bestseller books worldwide. But this man is a master on the mindset, on mindset. is. Unbelievable. Just imagine him being able to take Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan to win over and over and over again. Just imagine the abilities of this man, right? And um, what happened with me when I found him, it was that I noticed that my mindset, my spirit was very strong. I'm a spiritual athlete. I'm such a faith-based person that I'm okay, but my mindset had injuries. So sports people athletes come to Tim Grover to like I have an injury in my ankle I cannot jump I I need to compete in the final championship for me it was like 
something is happening. I have devoted my whole life to master my spiritual aspect and I haven't devoted time to really master my mind and I needed that part. And he said one day something to me that literally shaped shift my whole reality and business, Kevin. He said, Yvonne, you are powerful, not because you are a woman or you are a man, but because you are human. And the way he said it, it removed me the, the, the limitations of I'm a powerful woman. That's very limiting. Mm -hmm. Or I, uh, you know, I need to be like a man, very limiting. Or the alpha, beta, it's gone. So he, in a way, even though he, he probably, if he ever hears this podcast, I'll send it to him. He will be like, don't say that. You did the whole work, right? But he became for me the, the most powerful spiritual teacher that I have. Not because he taught me anything spiritually based, you know, like God, etc. That I, I, it's, it's my journey. But because he gave me the tools through his modeling, living example, and his awareness of how the mind works, on how to master my process of my mind and being able to, to be the best version of myself and win again and repeat again and not stay in the failure for long. Just stay in the failure a little bit. I love this. He says, when you fail, make sure to stay down a little bit. You know how we people say like, if you fall from the horse, get back as quickly as possible. He says, don't. Make sure to stay a little bit down to see what is the mess that you did, what mistakes you did so you don't repeat them again and then jump up in the horse again. So it's been, uh, it's been incredibly life-changing to, to learn from him. He's an extraordinary human being too. The quality of being that he is and his partner, uh, Shari Wang, who wrote these books are incredible. So I think that those two, you know, just to honor, you know, um, will be incredible for my life, my business, my spirit, everything. Yeah. So what has, you know, what are, what are one or maybe two things that really stand out for you that, that have transpired because of your relationships with Toby or Tim, and and what what is it's know, what my is... former husband is Enrique. <laughs> yeah. Oh, excuse me. Enrique. I I was married twice, but also my other former husband. I I was married twice, guys. I I I, I repeated the things, you know. Apparently, I had to learn my my mistakes a couple of times, but they are wonderful people. So, that is all right. Yeah. My first former husband and uh, well, I, I'm going to go, you know, when my first former husband was just to be present, that that's the, the one teaching. And but with Tim Grover, it's, it's several ones. Number one, that he always says pressure is a privilege. Instead of taking it like, oh, my gosh, I have too much pressure is bring it on, bring it on. Pressure is a privilege. The second teaching of his is your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. It does, because think about it, Kevin, and how he said it, you know, all the issues that we have, the mistakes we made has been when we haven't controlled our feelings at all, has never been because we were in control of our mind It's because we were emotional yeah. or we were, you know, so our mind has to be stronger than our feelings and pressure is a privilege. And the third teaching from him is you got to know, and I'm an absolute believer in that your dark side. So many people are downplaying themselves because they are in such a pretense mode, Kevin. They, they pretend just to convey an image, a Photoshop reality, uh, you know, architectural diet imagery of like, look who I am, look how much money I have. All this fakery, it's burying the power and the potency of who they are. And that's part of the dark side. But until you don't face it and say, wow, this is my shadow and integrate it. This is my dark side you will not be able to use that, that powerful energy of the dark side to propel you to win, to propel you to do what is right and to propel you to master yourself and be the light. And so- Wow, wow. that is really, really powerful insight right there, Ivan. Wow, wow, wow. So powerful. I recommend, you know, for whoever, you know, I, I speak of him in all of my podcasts. This is how impactful has been uh, the changes in my life, but his book, Relentless, yeah. And winning are like just next level of, it's, I think is a new philosophy for the future. You know, before it was the Stoics, this man has such wisdom, him and his co-author. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. Well, I really, you know, appreciate you taking the time to share this. And for anybody who's like listening to this going, wow, Kevin, 
that Yvonne, she is something else. And, and <laughs> I, I would love to find out more about her and what she's doing. How, how can people do that, Yvonne? Well, they can find me everywhere, everywhere in social media, Yvonne De La Flor. The only place is Yvonne underscore De La Flor is Instagram because someone, and we've been fighting with Instagram, right? If someone knows, let me know. Someone got Yvonne De La Flor, like just to make a fake account of me and oh. we haven't been able to recover it. So oh, okay. it's Yvonne. The real one is Yvonne underscore De La Flor. Twitter is Yvonne De La Flor. LinkedIn, Yvonne De La Flor. And my website is my company's website, DeLaFlorTeachings.com. Okay. So you can find us there. Very good. Very good. Well, once again, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to thank have this conversation. You. Any Anything else you want to share before we call it a wrap, Yvonne? No, just so thank you because you are such a, a force for connectivity and, and community and connecting great people. And I think that the times that we're living right now needs these networks of people coming together to create powerful businesses, to yeah. associate, you know, the power of association is something that is going to be able to help us all, especially in the United States, right? And in any other country, rise above all of the challenges that we're facing right now. So I just wanted to thank you for what you do. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. I mean, it, I, I, I'm like you, Ivan. It's, it's, it's just, I, I get so much joy and satisfaction from doing what I do and serving the people that I get to serve. And it's just, uh, I can't imagine doing anything else you know? mm -hmm. and, so, and uh and so well thank you again for taking the time to thank do this you. really appreciate it thank you so much everyone